On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, we're going to explore a world where your apps look great and Telerik and KenWI do most of the work for you. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today are Sam Bazu and Ed Charbonneau from Progress. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. And we're going to talk about controls, UI controls. Uh, love doing this as a Toolbox episode. Uh, we're going to talk about Telerik controls today, Kendo UI. So obviously, controls have been an extremely important part of the ecosystem since before there was an ecosystem. <laughs> I think that's the first one we had was the third party controls, we used to call them. Um, now it's just part of the ecosystem. Um, and obviously, been very important and Telerik's been around for a while, Kendo UI, a little bit newer, um, but you guys work for Progress, so the first thing we'll do is let's make sense of all those names. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so once again, thanks for having us. So uh, let's try doing two things in the show today. One is if you are a developer, mm -hmm. um, indie or enterprise, and if you have never heard of us or used our stuff, so let's talk about what Telerik and Kendo UI can do for you to make okay. your lives a little easier. So that's if you have never used our stuff. And then if you are already in this ecosystem using our stuff, maybe uh, we're going to show you some uh, cool new things that we have been busy with in the last couple of releases. So okay. um, some demos that we'll show, uh, a little bit of code, just to kind of get everybody up to speed that uh, there's a lot of help in this ecosystem and we can make okay. uh, developers much more productive. So, so Telerik and, and Kendo UI are under the Progress yes. umbrella. So the company is called Progress, okay. and these are product lines. Perfect. And we'll, we'll kind of break this down as to what each of them can do mm -hmm. uh, for web, desktop, and mobile. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's start. So once again, uh, I'm Sam Basu. Um, I'm a developer advocate out of Pennsylvania, and and I'm Ed Charbonneau, a developer advocate out of uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and we're both longtime Microsoft MVPs as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, we uh, we are advocates uh, of our products, but we are also developers. We right. we live and breathe this uh, every day. Uh, so. To your point, uh, developers need a little bit of help sometimes because uh, Microsoft and everybody else creates the tooling, creates the IDs, creates the rich ecosystem to get things going platform-wise. But there are little gaps, and it's not Microsoft's job to well, give you Sometimes there's huge everything. gaps. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, you know, often we do that on purpose, right? right like, right. you know, data grid's a perfect example yeah. where people will come and say, oh, you should make the data grid do this, do that, do that, do that, and do that. And we say, well, look at the data grids that are already out there by right. others who right. devote their lives to it. Wouldn't it be better if you just use theirs, right? right? Yeah. We obviously need to provide one, but rather than pour the resources in to making a data grid as good as uh, some of the third party ones, right? What's yeah. the point in that? Exactly. And, and on the surface, some of these things might seem simple, but then you get into the details of things like accessibility mm -hmm. and that that scope starts expanding. So right. you want to make sure you have these things where all users can use them and they're accessible to everyone. Right. Yeah. So it's never been our intention to make the absolute best controls ever, right? We as a ecosystem have great controls. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you make the platform, uh, we fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. So we are in the business of making developers successful. So let's talk about the UI frameworks that we make uh, that kind of help developers ship apps okay. faster. So first thing is Telerik. Uh, this is kind of where we started uh, like 17 years back. Um, so this is all of our .NET tooling uh, that comes branded as the, under the Telerik flag. So this is when we say any app, any platform, we do actually mean that. Mm -hmm. So anything .NET that you're doing, and, and there are multiple .NETs now. So you essentially choose the .NET that works for you. If you do .NET Framework, you're likely building WPF, WinForms, or WebForms applications. Mm -hmm. You may be doing .NET Core with the new ASP.NET stuff, or you may be doing Mono, uh, for Xamarin. So whichever .NET you choose, we want to make sure that we have all the tooling uh, for you. And these things integrate right inside of Visual Studio um, and kind of help you uh, be more productive. So we'll talk about all of the Telerik tooling. And then uh, Kendo UI is something uh, that uh, is probably about five or six years old now. Okay. A lot of engineering that we have poured into it. Uh, this is our front-end JavaScript uh, framework for all things modern web and mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, things started out very uh, on, on simple terms. Uh, we thought jQuery was a dependency everybody was happy to take. And uh, I mean, jQuery gets a uh, little bashing nowadays, but it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but Kendo UI is a classic example of how the web dev toolkit has evolved over time, because uh, now we make components for Angular, React, and Vue. So go make web apps however you want with ASP.NET, or if you're okay with JavaScript and SPA frameworks, then 
we will give you uh, the tools to render our UI however you want. Okay. And, and that's, the, that's the whole point with Kendo UI. And these tools are things that I've used in production for many years before joining the company uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people know us from the web forms days. Mm -hmm. And a lot has changed since then. And we have a lot of tools that are brand new, modern UI. And we support all the JavaScript frameworks and all the .NET ecosystems, uh, .NET Core, um, MVC. We have tag helpers and all those great things. We'll dive in deep in a little okay. bit here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's start with the web. He's our resident web expert. And then I'll talk about mobile and desktop. So for the web, if you are doing ASP.NET web forms, then um, uh, we have um, tools that will help you kind of Ajaxify your, your applications. Mm -hmm. Web forms doesn't need to be old school. And this is a question that we get a lot from uh, developers who are using uh, .NET Framework. Uh, web forms or WinForms forms and WPF are my platforms dying? No, it's fine. I mean, right. .NET Framework is part of Windows, and our, some of our heaviest usage uh, controls comes from web forms and WinForms forms and WPF. So if you are doing web forms, keep doing it happily. You're going to be in, you're going to be fine. Uh, if you are looking to modernize your apps, then maybe uh, look into MVC, mm -hmm. and then if you want to be on the bleeding edge, look at uh, .NET Core. Um, so no matter what you're doing, we want to make sure uh, we give you rich um, tooling. Uh, I think by now, .NET Core is not so much the bleeding edge. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. And if you look at where .NET Core 3 is headed, you're getting some of the yeah. .NET Core uh, goodness back onto uh, desktop. Right. So really, I mean, uh, choose whatever stack works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to give you UI toolkits that are matured, uh, almost 100 plus controls. Uh, so don't rediscover the wheel. Uh, if it makes sense for you. Um, and if you want to do JavaScript, then uh, I mean, obviously we have Kendo UI, which is full on ja uh, JavaScript, but you can um, render it through wrappers with ASP.NET MVC or um, JSP or PHP. Mm -hmm. um, and then the same things uh, power your web applications through ASP.NET Core. It's, it's all Kendo UI under, under the covers. And Kendo UI works really well with people that just want to write web API in ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's regular ASP.NET or Core, and you have those web APIs stood up, and you just want to consume and display data through Kendo UI, it works fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Another tool web developers, and most likely most desktop developers have used for a long time is Fiddler. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we have poured a lot of love into Fiddler. Uh, Fiddler used to be uh, a simple standalone tool, which uh, did like network proxies and showed you the network stack. We have uh, kind of separated the UI from the core functionality. That's called Fiddler Core. And we have that running on .NET Core now, so we can make Fiddler run on Linux and Mac as well. Mm -hmm. And Fiddler Core is just an engine. You can actually put that, embed that in your dashboard applications, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so don't be in doubt. Uh, know what's going on in your, uh, in your network stack. I'll let uh, kind of Ed talk about all the web stuff. Uh, let's talk about a few more things. Mobile. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because there are lots of things you can do. Uh, there is no one way of doing things. Uh, what you choose to do uh, your mobile apps in really depends on the type of app, what type of skills you bring to the table, mm -hmm. and how you want to maintain your code base. There is no right or wrong. If C Sharp is your thing, go all in with C Sharp and XAML. Uh, with Xamarin, I think that boat has sailed. Uh, we have had heavy investments on the Xamarin stack because we see how much people are using Xamarin. Because uh, for .NET developers, it's an easy way to get your, uh, your code and your expertise into these new platforms like right. iOS, Android. And it's not just those two. It's, uh, it's Samsung Tizen now. And uh, you see where all of these new platforms are coming up where Xamarin is able to port um, your, uh, your code to newer and newer platforms. Um, so that, that's exciting. Uh, but if the web is your thing and if you want to keep doing straight up JavaScript, then mm -hmm. uh, maybe you don't have to do C Sharp. Uh, so to that point, we have uh, native script, which is our open source framework for doing uh, native cross-platform apps with JavaScript. Or uh, we also work closely with Google. Uh, so if you wanted to do Angular and TypeScript, we'll let you do that as well. And okay. you're kind of sharing code a little bit uh, component-wise between web and mobile. So again, choose however you want to come at uh, the mobile. Mm -hmm. You've you got some choices. And again, all of this is tooling that's integrated inside of Visual Studio, so you never have to leave. It's worth mentioning, too, that all of our web stuff is responsive mobile. Yeah. So if you have a mobile app or a web application that you want to be compatible with the, the smaller displays on your phones and tablets, then our controls can uh, accommodate that as well. OK. Yeah, absolutely. Desktop. Um, this doesn't get as much love, uh, we think, that it deserves. Because <laughs> think about how many million dollar enterprises run things on desktop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, WPF is here to stay. It's touch friendly. It can power modern apps. 
And I mean, even if you're doing wind farms, you don't have to do the old school things. You see the kind of love that wind farm gets from .NET Framework itself, mm -hmm. high DPI and, and so on. Um, so these are things that we started uh, at, at Telerik with. So rich, rich UI controls for WPF and wind farms. Mm -hmm. uh, they get heavy usage. And if you are in the UWP, Universal Windows Platform stack, uh, this is rich because it lets you target anything that runs Windows 10. Okay. So you write a UWP app, it's going to run on HoloLens, on Surface Hub, on all tablets, you yeah. name it. So UWP is kind of in between desktop and mobile. It can do both, but it's, it's one platform. Right. right? So uh, we want to empower developers um, to build modern Windows apps however they want mm -hmm. under the UI tools that they need. Uh, something that we don't often talk about uh, enough is uh, some of the other things we can do because modern enterprise apps also need some help, like reporting, uh, report servers. Uh, Test Studio is another product we have that lets you automate uh, testing for okay. web, desktop, and mobile. And then we have uh, lots of little things for developers which are very helpful for productivity. Things like mocking frameworks, looking inside of assemblies to see uh, what's, what's in it. So all of those things are, are free for developers to use uh, to kind of boost their productivity. So that's, that's kind of us. That's cool. uh, a lot of Telerik UI is .NET. A lot of Kindy UI is JavaScript, mm -hmm. and then there are things that kind of augment enterprise apps through reporting and, and testing. Right. Right. So with that, uh, let's kind of jump into a few things. But this is one thing we want to talk about. Uh, this is new. Um, uh, if you are into chatbots uh, or conversational UI, um, then we can kind of uh, uh, help with polished UI for bot frameworks and chatbots that right. can be integrated inside of desktop, mobile, or web apps. Yep. And for the first time, we have been able to do something that kind of stretches all through our product stack, uh, .NET and JavaScript. Right. So we'll talk about this a little bit. Yep. Uh, so you and I did, yesterday we uh, recorded a couple episodes yeah. on bots, which will be, um, uh, those will go live sometime, sometime in the near here. future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going live first. Those ones will follow yep. in the near future. So and, yeah, we, and we dive into that quite a bit. Exactly. In those and, the, and the point is uh, chatbots and bots aren't just for the fluffy nebula stuff. They mm -hmm. have real enterprise um, uh, needs uh, that they can fulfill. They can help you automate workflows, and we can help you put good UI uh, in front of it. Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about bots all across uh, our, our product lines. So with that, uh, let's kind of take a look at some of this yeah. UI thing that we're cool talking demos. about. Yeah, let's yeah. Uh, have it over to Ed. So I'm going to start off with some demos of our uh, UI products for all the web. Okay. So the first thing I would suggest people to do if you're interested in the, the components from our Telerik and Kendo UI brands is to go to demos.telerik.com. So we have lots of interactive demos on mm -hmm. that page. Um, I've got it up here on the screen now. And you can see um, at demos.teller.com all of the different platforms that we support. So Kendo UI uh, supports everything from jQuery to Angular, uh, React, and Vue. Um, those Angular and React components, we wrote those from the ground up again. So those are written in the native frameworks that they belong to. Okay. So they're very performant, uh, very feature rich, um, and uh, geared for those JavaScript front-end uh, single-page SPA applications. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've supported ASP.NET MVC since day one. Uh, so we have 70-plus uh, UI controls for ASP.NET MVC. And then that same library works in ASP.NET Core as well. Um, and then the ASP.NET Core version, of course, you can develop on iOS, Mac, Windows, Yep. and deploy on those systems as well. Right. So you get the cross-platform cross capabilities. Um, those controls will work on those servers and, and those development environments. And uh, as of the last release, we've even added tag helpers for all of those components that we have. So tag helpers is a feature that was launched with ASP.NET Core. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of writing uh, UI markup with HTML attributes and tags uh, much almost exactly like HTML is structured. Uh, so those things light up in your development environment and they, they flow nicely with, uh, along with the HTML that you're writing. Mm -hmm. So we have full coverage in that, uh, for that as well. And of course we have our, our tried and true uh, web forms uh, components as well. 
And those things are very mature, very feature rich. Right. Uh, so you can find all of those demos at demos.telerik.com. Okay. And I'm going to jump into demos on our ASP.NET Core side of things because uh, it's where all the latest and greatest stuff lives. Uh, one thing that you'll notice if you go to these pages is whenever we do updates, we flag them with these little update icons. So you mm -hmm. see all those green lights on there. That's all stuff that's been recently added. So we do this quite often. Uh, we update our, our UI controls with uh, customer suggestions, things that people are asking for and need, and then stuff that's on our roadmap that we think people will get use out of. Uh, so one of the things that's brand new is in our data grid. And with the latest version of ASP.NET Core, uh, we had a new release of Signal R. Right. So this is WebSockets. Uh, we're able to take data and push down to the browser through WebSockets and do updates on the UI. So this is a really cool demo. Um, in order to do, do this, I'm going to duplicate this tab. So I've got two of these uh, demos running. And I'm going to break these apart and put them side by side so we can see them both running at the same time. Um, and I'm going to go to the Signal R demo on these. So this is a demo. We've got a Signal R service um, on our server running. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to do is if I'm in the grid and I make an edit, it's going to live update the second grid. Mm. And it's going to keep those two things in sync. And it's doing this through a communication channel using uh, Signal R. So I can say, hello, VS Toolbox. And when I update this, the grid on the right-hand side immediately updates with those changes. So you could have a multi-tenant application where you have people editing simultaneous data, and those things can be updated in real time Crazy. in both of those grids. Cool. No, I mean, for context, uh, we had SignalR in ASP.NET MVC the, uh, initially. And then when ASP.NET Core first came out, uh, they had to drop it because they were trying to ship it right. uh, first. And we sorely missed it for like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And now it's back. Uh, so what you see here is uh, a SignalR hub that's connected to both of the clients. And that's yep. where we can push uh, updates back and forth. Uh, that's when if you have to host it yourself, but there's also a new service now in Azure. It's an Azure SignalR hub, which right. will take care of all of the scaling needs, and you just have a hub in Azure that you can connect any number of clients to, and it scales. Yep. And compatibility for that would be on the server. Yep. So it wouldn't affect the client side of this, but it's totally supported uh, through that SignalR um, uh, socket that we have. So uh, we're able to bind uh, SignalR data, other backend services as well. Um, the grid is super powerful. I'm going to jump into a Visual Studio demo here and show just how uh, powerful and simple it is to use. So I've got in my browser here another demo open. Uh, this is open in Visual Studio and on my machine, and I'm, I'm displaying uh, the compiled application here. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got my uh, Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core grid. Now, the grid has paging, sorting, filtering, um, we can export to uh, PDF and Excel and lots of really great things. The nice thing about the grid is it's really easy to set up. Let's look at the code behind here. We have a nice fluent API interface where we can define the columns, bind to data sources, mm -hmm. uh, do all of those great things. So if we go back to our grid, uh, if I click on my headers, you can see we have sorting. Uh, this is uh, optional. We can do server-side or client-side sorting. So if we have very large data sets, we don't want to send all of that down to the client and have that sorting on the client. So we can mix and match uh, depending on our needs where we want that sorting to happen. Um, we also have these uh, nice filtering uh, UIs that we can add. Mm -hmm. uh, we just simply add uh, in the code um, filterable equals true. So we just say filterable on that grid, and those filters are automatically added for us. So we have the ability to do greater than, less than, all of those type of things. Um, we can also drag and drop and do grouping right there on the grid. And these are touch friendly as well. I right. can just drag with my finger and drop that up there. Uh, and we could sort by city. These are collapsible. And um, if we wanted to even do some more advanced sorting uh, or filtering, um, I, I like this UI. It's nice, but sometimes we have uh, simpler needs. So maybe I don't need to set uh, equal to, greater than, contains, all of these things. I've only got a couple cities in this column that I want to sort by. Mm -hmm. So we have this new feature that we added uh, a couple releases ago. And uh, it's one of my favorite features. And I'm just going to go into that column that I was talking about, the city column. 
and I'm going to put another piece of code off the end of this chain that says filterable, and I'm going to set multi to true. So what this is, uh, we kind of nicknamed it um, Excel-like filtering. Right. Because in Excel, if you have a filter on something, yep. let's refresh the page so we get that change. Uh, notice when I click on filter, it's going to scan mm -hmm. that column for the data and then only prompt me with the values that I'd like to, to filter by. So I can say Louisville because that's where I'm from. Hit refresh and there's all my Louisville call, uh, data cool. points in Very that cool. column. So really cool stuff. Uh, all, all the grids support CRUD operations. You can do create, read, update, delete all day long. Uh, we have different modes of being able to do these CRUD operations. You can do them in line. You can do pop-ups. You can even do batch editing. So I can enable batch editing on this grid and go through, make lots and lots of changes, and then hit a Save button one time. And then I'll post back an array back to my controller so I can mm -hmm. um, modify those on my database. Um, we also support uh, export to different formats. And it's really easy to do. Again, back in my configuration, all I have to do is modify one line of code. And I'm going to add a toolbar here. And I'm going to set the toolbar uh, with a button called Excel. That's all I have to do for the grid to understand that I want to export this entire thing to Excel. Notice when I refresh, I have an mm. Excel export button. I click on that and it's going to download an Excel file to my machine with all the data that's represented in the grid. Cool. We can do that to PDF as well. Uh, and we can, we can even do JPEG exports and all kinds of uh, robust features with this. I mean, our, our app platforms um, have come a long way, but uh, something as universal as grid is something right. everybody needs. <laughs> and like Absolutely. export functionality, every enterprise needs something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Now, on the same page, I've got a nice chart that's being displayed. I won't go into the details on all of the configurations for a chart. Uh, we have a lot of varieties. If you go to demos.telerik.com, you'll see all the, the different varieties of charts. And you can mm -hmm. imagine we have pies and bars and all, all of those things that you need. Uh, but what I wanted to show is we have uh, that uh, feature parity I was talking about with tag helpers. Uh, we have tag helpers now for all of our components on ASP.NET Core. And that chart that you just saw on the screen is built using a tag helper. And you can see that it's very HTML-like in its structure. So if you haven't seen right. tag helpers before, uh, instead of writing this fluent API, some people prefer to see it in that same context, that HTML-like context. Uh, so we have that option available now. Mm -hmm. So we can define all the chart properties. You get IntelliSense with all of these. The bonus with uh, the tag helpers is you get IntelliSense for normal HTML-like things as well. Right. So you get your bootstrap classes fed to you and all that great stuff. So I think I mean developers have choice. Like you can do straight up jQuery if you want, if you're comfortable. You can do Razor syntax, but you're mixing and matching C sharp and client side a little bit mm -hmm. too closely. And then if you wanted it to be clean, you just do tag helpers. Okay. And notice on that that previous page I had, I mixed the two together. They're not exclusive. Right. So I can have HTML helpers for certain things if that works better for maybe a grid, and then I can use them for other uh, tag helpers for other things as well and uh, they can coexist, no problem. Okay. Um, the next demo here, uh, I'm not going to go deep into chat, but I wanted to show that our chat component is there. Um, I have it on the page. What it does, it wraps up the API for the chat, gives it a nice visual look and feel to it. Uh, we can step through the chat bot and see its responses. And in this response, I'm looking for uh, the fact that the chat bot wants a date. Right. So our component library has a date picker. So I can actually say, use our date picker in that chat bot and skin that interface so I can just select a date and click a button and there I have my um, answer for the chat mm -hmm. bot. Now, what I really wanted to show about this chat bot is how simply I can take a tag helper and make this into a floating window that I can move around in my UI. Notice right now I just have a simple bounding box here, a little gray. Uh, line around it. I don't have any interactivity with the chat bot as far as moving that interface around. So I guess, I guess that's how like most websites have mm -hmm. like chat embedded, like a little thing pops up yeah. in a corner to say, hey, do you want to chat with us more? So one of the drawbacks of HTML helpers was that if they had embedded or child content within them, there was a lot of escaping going on to get the, the HTML to render uh, the way that we wanted it to. Uh, it wasn't impossible. It just didn't flow very nicely. Mm -hmm. So on, on this form, I have my Kendo chat. 
So this is the tag helper that makes that chat UI show up. And I'm going to wrap that chat in some more tag helpers. So I'm going to declare a Kendo window tag helper around the outside of that chat window. And watch me uncomfortably remove comments <laughs> from it. <laughs> and we'll reformat that so it indents nicely. So you can see that I'm wrapping it in the window. And I'll go back and refresh the page. Just that simple little wrap of HTML around that element gives me this nice drag mm. and drop uh, window interface. Okay. And now cool. I even have a close button. So if I wanted to close the chat, I can just click there. Right. All that functionality came Very out nice. of those few tags that I wrapped it in. And while we're on the subject of simple tag helpers, this is our spreadsheet control. We added this about last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very, very complex UI component that if you built for yourself, would take a, a force of people to, right. <laughs> to create. Uh, it's very feature rich. Um, so this is going to be very similar, similar to the, the feel that you get out of something like Microsoft Excel. And it's something that you can embed in your web page. Uh, out of the box, this thing has import, export. Uh, so you can import from Excel files directly into it. Uh, you can export into other formats as well as Excel. And it does all of these capabilities with very little configuration. The code behind this page is going to be very small. Um, and it's actually pretty impressive that I'm able to display something like that with a simple tag. Nice. So if I say Kendo spreadsheet, and then just close that tag off. That's mm -hmm. all I need for all that functionality. Now I can add more properties to this and configure it however I want. I can pre-populate it with data. I can send that data back to a controller and save it on the server. That data comes back as JSON. Mm -hmm. So we can just simply take that and pipe it into SQL. And the latest version to SQL support JSON format, we can just stash that right into a table field. So we can pull that in and out, and we have nice interactivity for users. Cool. So this is some of the, the modern stuff that we have available. Uh, we have a lot of um, updates in that last release. As you can see on that demo page, mm -hmm. all those green lights coming up. Um, anytime you visit demos.teller.com, look for those and see what we've added. Cool. Sam, you were going to talk about some mobile stuff and yep. some chat. Uh, kind of demoed the chat a little bit, but you can get a little more into detail. Sure, on sure. It. And I mean, uh, Robert and I made uh, a show yesterday on all types of chatbots. Yep. So if you need to dive into those, uh, please take a look. Uh, let, let's switch up. Um, I want to start back uh, as to how things get started, because sometimes we lose track of all the different ways in which you can kind of pull in our stuff into your development stack. If you are beginning greenfield projects, which is not every day, right. uh, but we, we want to help you out. So um, so if you head out to uh, Telerik.com, you'll see all of our stuff, and then we can kind of drill down uh, based on products. You'll see what we have for web, desktop, and mobile. Whichever uh, stack you are building on, uh, I mean, go to that page, uh, go to the landing page, and it'll tell you all about what we do. Uh, this one here is talking about Xamarin. Uh, now, there are several ways in which you can get started with our stuff and how you bring it in. Um, if you just hit that big trial button on most product pages, we'll mm -hmm. give you the binaries. We'll give you an example. Uh, pretty much all of the code that uh, I can uh, demo today, those are uh, code that we give out. It's either on GitHub or you can download it. So that's one way in which you could get the binaries. If you already use our stuff, like if you have a subscription, then uh, you can go up here, uh, go into your account, and you'll have all of your downloads. Okay. And these are also versions, so you can go back in, in time if you needed like older versions of it. So these are uh, common ways in which you can just download the bits and get them in, because they are DLLs, especially on the .NET side. They're just pure mm -hmm. DLLs. You can just include them as dependencies in your project, and you're good to go on existing projects. If you are starting up new things, we want to help you out a little bit with some Visual Studio templates. And we have templates for everything, ASP.NET, uh, Xamarin, uh, WPF, you name it. You can say, file new project, Telerik uh, WPF app. Oh, and we'll okay. just give you all the DLLs right mm -hmm. there. Uh, but sometimes we might want to have a little more control over how we are bringing it, things in. So in case of Xamarin, um, which is where I work a lot uh, these days, so if you were doing Xamarin, uh, let's take a look at some uh, stuff here in Visual Studio. I'm on VS for Mac. Mm -hmm. You get the exact same experience on Visual Studio on, on, on mm -hmm. Windows. Uh, if you just hit download on that page, uh, we give you a, a little folder 
which has all of our stuff. So it'll have the binaries, it'll have some example code and, and everything. So I'm showing you uh, that example app which is also something you can download from iOS, Android, and UWB stores. So let's just say you, you are in Visual Studio on a project that you had already started. This isn't uh, a, a new thing. So uh, one thing that you can do is on, on any Visual Studio, Windows or, or Mac, you can go in here into Preferences, and you can set up a NuGet feed. So notice how normal NuGet comes from API nuget.org. This mm -hmm. is where you go to get any NuGet package. Uh, you can go to nuget.telery.com forward slash nuget. This is our NuGet server, so we can host all the bits for you. So that way you don't have to remember to download all the DLLs and pull them in. You can just go here. It'll, it's going to ask for your credentials one time, and then you're good to go. With that in place, and you can also set up a local NuGet feed, obviously. Uh, this is a, a Xamarin uh, solution here. Uh, this is a .NET standard library. So what I can do here is add uh, a NuGet package. And this one here is pointed to our Telerik NuGet feed. So just about everything that he showed in ASP.NET, mm -hmm. WPF, Xamarin, mm -hmm. everything is available as a NuGet package. It's okay. an easier way to kind of bring things in. And we kind of uh, are also conscious of the way, oops, I hit add too quickly. Let's pull that up again. It is adding the Xamarin bits, which it already has. So here, if I go and search for Xamarin, so you see that even for uh, UI for Xamarin, which is all of our UI suite, it's not one package. It's a okay. whole bunch of packages. And this is because, especially if you're doing a mobile app, we want to be conscious of how much your package size right. is. We want, don't want to give you everything that you probably are not using. So there are light packages. There are packages customized for individual controls that you're using. Sometimes we will use native UI for iOS, Android, and UWP. Sometimes we'll build a cross-platform UI with uh, Skiasha, which is Google's uh, 2D library. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are using things that you know um, you're going to need, just get those bits as, okay. as NuGet. So you're not bloating your app packages unnecessarily. And you can also version things uh, on a NuGet package just as easily. So several ways in which you can just bring in our stuff. Okay, Let's, uh, let's close this and let me uh, go ahead and run this app. Uh, this is again the sample app. So it's going to pull up my iOS simulator here, uh, which works exactly the same way with, uh, with Android or UWP. We're going to let it build for a second. Now, is this the Telerik Tagit application that you're using? No, that, that's another uh, sample app. So what he's referring to is if you go look up uh, this app that we wrote, a lot of the times we uh, get a little dinged because we show simple stuff. So we want yeah. to actually show really uh, a complex uh, real-world app that we can put in the stores. So if you guys are interested in Xamarin Forms, uh, take a look at this app that we actually have in iOS, Android, and UWP stores. It's mm -hmm. a real full-on uh, application that kind of scans your pictures in your photo library, uh, calls into Azure Cognitive Services for their vision API, and so we can tag things correctly so you can search on your photos. Yeah, nice. So we give out the whole source code. It's on, out on GitHub, uh, but play with this app. It's uh, kind of a real-world app made with our UI, kind of shows you how to use our stuff with Azure and, and so on. And that's, that's an attempt we are consciously making. Uh, because apps don't live in silos. So mm -hmm. for all of our stuff, we are showing integrations with Azure or Amazon or wherever you want to keep uh, your data and your services. Uh, this one here is just a sample app here. So let me go pull this up. So let's change the background so it's not as disturbing. All right, so this is the app that you get. Uh, you can play with this on your phone. Uh, this has all of the stuff that we uh, build. And you'll see some of the latest stuff that we have done. Um, we talked about conversational UI a little bit. This is our UI for uh, chatbots. It works mm -hmm. consistently. Uh, this one is connected to a bot that's in a uh, bot framework that's hosted mm -hmm. in Azure. So uh, same ex exact experience as we get on the web. We can uh, go get a start date. We can render a calendar. Uh, we can have different types of pickers like this. These buttons, they are pickers. And then um, let's just say all three of us are going on a vacation. And then it's going to give you more pickers to choose from. And then these are what's called, uh, next step is what's called hero cards. So we can have some imagery, we can have a uh, richer experience, and then the uh, user simply chooses it. And again, this is uh, independent of any bot framework that you use. Could be Amazon, could be a uh, bot framework. Microsoft bot framework is something we are all comfortable with. Uh, so you see the bot experience. It's, it's simple, but it's smart, polished UI in front of bots. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure yeah. that 
people might have noticed that's the exact same bot that I used on the web just a moment yep. ago. Yep. So right. it was that same travel assistant and the same yep. uh, workflow that we just walked through on the web. Yeah. So what, what it is is a bot that is hosted in Azure. It's written in Microsoft Bot Framework and it's using a direct line, um, either JS or .NET. So mm -hmm. we are able to interface through it, uh, in a, to it uh, in a RESTful way and we get the results back from the bot framework. And bots by themselves don't do a whole lot unless you hook it up to other intelligent, intelligent services like cognitive services, which will help you do natural language, uh, identification, all your rules and all your state management, uh, all that good stuff. One thing that was really cool about that is you had a calendar on yours that came from the Xamarin, or the, the sorry, the natural iOS uh, formatted right. calendar yeah. that, that's out of our UI library. Yeah that we're able to inject into that yeah. chat experience. And then I was able to do the same thing with Kendo UI on the web. Our Kendo uh, calendar got yeah. injected yeah. into that experience. They're native so. UI on whichever platform that mm -hmm. you're running yeah. on. Some new things that we did on the Xamarin platform, because Xamarin gets a lot of love these days for developers, because it's an easy way for c -sharp developers to take your code uh, places. Uh, we've added barcodes for boarding passes and uh, QR codes, whatever you name it, different types of uh, encoding that you may have for your barcode galleries, all of that is in place. Um, obviously, we have our charts and graphs. These are things that you really don't want to create by hand. Yeah. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of engineering to pull off uh, native charts, but these are all interactive and, and, and they flow nicely. Um, other things we have done, uh, let's go look at list views. This is something I always use. Uh, you often find us building components which have a corresponding default uh, implementation in Xamarin or in ASP.NET, but we can just put it on steroids. We can add a whole lot more APIs and, and easy uh, uh, implementation and uh, ease of use on these controls. Uh, this one, I mean, most mobile apps end up being a list of things, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, a very polished list view that has pull, on, pull to refresh. You can slide left or right as you do with your mail. Uh, so we can kind of light all of that up. Uh, you can uh, reorder things. Yep. For some reason, this thing died. So let's pull it up again. Now those barcodes are extremely useful for manufacturing yeah. scenarios. I used to work in manufacturing when I was doing app dev, and those are used all over factories right. to communicate between ERP systems and other machines. Uh, we were always scanning things in and out. So it's a very helpful tool for doing development in those scenarios. Hmm. Somehow it's not like liking the reorder. Uh, let's look at some of the things, but I mean, you can kind of reorder things uh, once you're in, in, a, in a list view, um, and, and that's the whole point of having a list view that's polished. You can like open up um, just a couple of settings to have it um, do paging, sorting, filtering, either client side or, or server side. Um, I was actually not, uh, uh, I was a little hesitant about putting grids on mobile devices, but it turns out a lot of line of business apps actually need a grid right. uh, because you have a uh, list of things uh, that you want to show uh, that is in a grid format. So uh, you can do grids, pretty much the same functionality that you saw on the web. We can do custom filtering, sorting, and all of these things can be localized. So uh, if you change the language settings, we can, uh, if you have the right resource files, we can light this up in w whatever language that you need. So uh, a lot of love has gone into, uh, in, into Xamarin of late. Um, and uh, we, we see how uh, Xamarin Forms really helps developers uh, reach platforms that they have not. And uh, I'm not going to show a lot of code here because this entire uh, solution you can just download okay. and see all of this code. Uh, it's also out on GitHub. Uh, let's look at um, a little bit of the desktop side of the story. Uh, and I'm going to pull up my Windows 10 VM here. Hopefully it's still running. Okay, so this is Windows 10 and this is UWP. This is Universal Windows Platform. Mm -hmm. Works exactly the same way on desktop, uh, tablets, phones, yep. maybe, uh, and then <laughs> HoloLenses and other, other things. So it's, it's across all of Windows 10. And uh, if you head out actually to uh, this URL here, uh, Telerik forward slash open, uh, we actually do a lot of open source work, which people may not know. Uh, some of it is commercial, but not everything can be open source. But we mm -hmm. actually do put out a lot of things that are open source and free for developers to use and come work with us collaboratively. Uh, NativeScript, which is our uh, uh, JavaScript native library for building cross-platform native apps, that's entirely open source. All of the UI, all of the tooling is open source. We can do cloud builds for you. Uh, if you don't have Apple devices, Kendo UI core is open source. And then this is what I'm talking about, U UI for 
uh, universal Windows platform. Okay. This entire thing is open source. We worked cool. closely with Microsoft mm -hmm. last year, uh, and this has gotten a lot of love. This is more than two dozen really smart controls like grids and charts and graphs. That in the entire thing is open source. It's actually part of the Windows template studio. If you want to build UWP apps, they'll pull in the Telerik grid uh, from a fine new project. Okay. We talked about those fine details earlier. Remember, I mentioned accessibility. You mentioned localization. When you talk about Windows Universal, we actually have ink capability as well. Yep. So those are things that right. uh, if you're going to try to create these controls yourself, the, the fine details like that are, are something that takes that extra time. Yep. Sure. And I mean, the same things that you expect, charts and graphs, different types of charts and graphs, all, they all light up uh, right here. And we also give you the code um, that renders these things. So you can kind of check out how these things are working. And it, it's, a, it's a nice polished app. And if you, you don't have to install any bits. You can just go to the UW store and kind mm -hmm. of play around with this and uh, see all that we can light up. Um, grids are really hard to do sometimes. And then um, uh, we are also known for uh, different types of gauges, right. linear, uh, radio, all of those things can be lit up uh, fairly easily from your XAML. Uh, so that's the UWP story. It's it's XAML that is particular to UWP, mm -hmm. but XAML for WPF has a slightly different variation. So it has XAML for XAML forms, sure. and I mean there are uh, efforts on um, underway to kind of yeah. Uh, yeah. have it uh, be uniform, uh, and and we are keeping a uh, watch on that to see how that uh, can help developers have one piece of XAML that's rendered consistently across all platforms. All right. So that, that's UWP. Uh, cool. Let me show you one more demo of uh, our WPF controls. Uh, because again, WPF runs a whole lot of businesses uh, because it's, it's very popular. So let's close this and go to the WPF one. Uh, this is full on WPF, uh, native UI running on top of Windows. Uh, it has uh, a lot of controls, a rich, rich ecosystem, 100 plus controls. Uh, one thing to note is uh, conversation UI again. So we were able to do chatbots across everything, mm -hmm. mobile uh, and uh, web and desktop. This is again the same uh, travel agency. Uh, if I can maybe flip to show you something else, let's uh, do healthcare. Uh, so notice how it's just a bot, uh, book a checkup. Um, yeah, so you, you get the point. So this is yep. all like uh, chatbot UI. I don't want to uh, give away too much yeah. of our bots episode. Right. <laughs> um, so we were able to do this consistently across all platforms is what cool. I'm saying. Uh, if you are using anything in WPF, uh, don't rediscover the wheel. There is a lot of help uh, on the WPF stack. We give you a lot of code, sample code, and these demo apps to kind of show you how to hook these things up and render uh, smart UI. Great. Yeah. So there was a lot of things That's we covered. a whirlwind tour. Uh, our, our little takeaway here is there's an awful lot yeah. that folks can take advantage of. Exactly. Yep. Um, so we didn't dive a whole lot into code, but uh, these sample apps are all out there. Yep. Play around with it. Uh, yeah, you don't absolutely. have to install anything. There's free trials. Yep. Go see what's out there. Yep. Um, see how easy they are to use, how much you can improve the look and feel of your apps. Yep. For any of these things, just go to Telerik.com, click yep. free trial, or go to demos.telerik.com yep. and play with it right there in the browser. Yeah. Cool. So put modern UI in top, you know, on top of any app that you're building. It's going to help drive that delightful user experience uh, for your users. Uh, so this was, like I said, a quick primer for all, all right. things we do. Um, thanks so much for watching. I'm Sam, and this is Ed again. Thanks and so thanks much for, for coming us. on. Thanks for having us, Robert. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Absolutely go out and check this stuff out. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.